So now let's start learning another package of web scripting that is called the Selenium. Selenium is a is a bit different than the request in Beautiful Soup, as Beautiful Soup as request is basically a package is a function with the input of the web link and the output of the of the the string of all the HTML codes. And the beautiful soup is a function uh, well is a is a package of a lot of functions of analyzing the uh, the string of the uh, HTML file. So it has a lot of functions of like find and find all to uh, to to facilitate our analysis and organization of the data. Selenium is a bit different. Selenium is uh, basically a, a browser web browser uh, simulator. So you can use a function to control or manipulate a specific browser. It is it has a lot of functions called uh, drivers. So you can use a driver to manipulate the web. So what is Selenium? So uh, an account does not have Selenium, if I remember right. So you need to install Selenium so that you can use it. So how do you install Selenium? If you're using Windows, you do CMD, or 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 easy, more easily if you install that account, I use an account that don't prompt because I'm using Frankie's computer. So so is PIP install. PIP is a package that has been um, installed by an account. So you use PIP install Selenium. Because I have or I think Frankie has already uh, has already uh, installed it, so it says the requirement already satisfied. If you haven't installed the Selenium, you should do it right now. Right now, if you use uh, Mac, if you use Mac, you should uh, find out the terminal. Okay, terminal, and in terminal, you use PIP install Selenium. Okay, some people have different bugs. For example, you probably want to redirect your root folder to where you install Anaconda or Python so that you can use, um, you can successfully install uh, Selenium. Some people may use, may need to use another code called the uh, Conda install. And other people, Conda install Selenium. And some other people may need to use PIP3 install. So, uh, depending on your computer's uh, specification, it is um, it is hard for me to 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 know um, uh, like whether what, what kind of bugs you, you may have. But normally, if you just uh, open an account prompt and you type PIP install Selenium, then things will be fine. Okay. The second thing is that you need to install a web driver. The web driver is to be installed by yourself. You basically Google uh, the the Selenium Chrome driver uh, for 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 the teaching purpose. We use uh, Chrome. Um, there are also other drivers like IE. Uh, like the other computer of mine uh, doesn't support. Chrome, for whatever reason, it has been uh, compromised for several years. I have no idea what's going on. So I use IE. Um, others may use Firefox and the other popular browsers. But it, they, they are probably the, the, the they're, they're probably no difference for, 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 for the purpose of using uh, Selenium. So if you, uh, the thing is that if you download this, you should also remember the path that where you download it. For example, if you download it to somewhere in Mac, or you download this, the, the for Windows, you need to remember the folder where you store this driver and you replace or replace this string as a as a 
as a, as a, as a folder where you store it. Okay. So now I have the driver's path. It goes my pass plus uh, OS does separate plus uh, the, the driver. If you use Mac, you don't have to type the .exe. You just have the the driver. Okay. Uh, OS does sep is used because uh, the slash and the the slash and the slash in the in Windows and the slash in the Mac are they are they are the opposite. So when we use uh, OS does because we import the OS operating system, the OS uh, is, is going to be automatically transferred, converted into a slash or or a reverse slash, depending what your operating system is, Windows or Mac. Okay. So far, it's a preparation to use Synanium. So there were several key steps. The first key step is that you need to understand that the Synanium dot web driver. If you use from Synanium import web driver, you don't have to type Synanium every time. You just type web driver. So web driver is a function. Is a, well, it's a package of functions actually. The, the Chrome is a method. You use web drivers Chrome to execute and manipulate the Chrome browser itself. For example. For example, here, see, this takes a little bit long time. Uh, it initiates the browser of Chrome. So, when I talk about manipulation, I mean operating on this com uh, on this browser. You know, whenever you click any button on this browser, uh, on this browser. You're actually executing a function. For example, here you do this, and you maximize the window, and you turn it back to normal. You can also write a code to achieve the same goal. For example, browser has a lot of different functions, like if I tap, type uh, press tab, I will have all of this. Okay. You can find a lot of things, for example, find the elements from the browser, or you can do something to the browser. Like, I can maximize the window or minimize the window. Okay, for example, if I maximize the window and I execute it, you will see the window being automatically maximized. If I minimize the window, you will see it being minimized. And I just don't want to maximize it. Okay, see, I can use the simulator to operate the browser within Spider. Okay, let's first ignore this and uh, learn something also important but I haven't talked about in the class um, that will be used in uh, this whole code. That is the strings, uh, to fill in the strings. Because we will use it to, to, uh, um, to form the different URLs, the web links for the different web pages. If we have a string, say it's a my string equals uh, Frankie is a good guy. It's gotta be Frankie is a good guy. Okay. And I can also make my string as this is uh, I I, I didn't type the A good guy should be A good guy. So let's format something. 
if I do format Frankie, I will also have Frankie is a good guy. So the curly, breast, uh, curly brackets will be replaced by the dot format, the string, the dot formats method. So this is something we're going to use in our our coding. So now what we want to get is is this. This is a Nasdaq's um, website, and you can see that on the Nasdaq website, you, by the way, when you open the Nasdaq website, please do not just uh, do uh, o.nasdaq.com.symbol. If you go, if you access a website from top to bottom, like you probably will find that the website cannot be opened. It happened before uh, when I taught some of the other classes. Um, so you need to type the whole the you need to type the 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 the, the link as, as a whole. So you will see that NASA this website stores many different um, data for one company. AAPI is Apple. Okay. It has a total revenue, cost of revenue. So you can see what is this? This is an income statement. Income statement starts from the total revenue, then you minus a bunch of different costs. Then you might then you get the EBITDA, then you minus uh, depreciation, amortization, taxes, interest expense, all of other things. Finally, you will get the profit or the net earnings or the net income. Okay. This is a income statement. In this web page, you also can click this to get the balance sheet data. You will have the <clears throat> current asset. What is current asset? This is a short-term asset. This is called current asset. Long-term asset is also called capital. Okay. You will have the goodwill, to fixed assets, a lot of equity liabilities, a lot of other financial information. And you can also have the uh, cash flow. The cash flow statements. Uh, it's a little bit slow. Let's just forget about it. Okay. So I wanna this task is that I wanna have multiple companies the the balance sheets data and income statement data organized in one table, multiple companies. For example, like our final goal is to have something like this. I wanna have the Amazon, Apple. Facebook, IBM, Microsoft, and you can go on and on. You can have a lot of different companies. Quarterly, every quarter's total revenue, gross profit, net income. So these data are from income statements. And these data are from uh, balance sheet. And this data should be from the cash flow statements. I want to combine the cash flow statements and uh, the different financial statements information and create such an organized table. Why do I do this? Well, maybe because I want to calculate some summary statistics to analyze the financial data. For example, I want to, uh, I want to, I want to, um, for, you know, when you have this, you can store it in a data frame so you can easily <clears throat> calculate the average or the standard deviation of the total revenue uh, of all of the uh, NASA companies in the first quarter, second quarter, and third quarter um, you know, separately so that you can calculate the growth rates. That may help you understand something, right? So this is what I want to do. Okay. The, well, of course, you don't have to do it by writing a code. You can, you can simply just, you know, copy the data, then, then, then paste it into Excel and keep doing this. And, um, but if you do this, Every quarter, the data is being updated. You have to do it all of all of the things over again. But if you write a code, 
again, you have a higher fixed cost, and but you have a long, uh, you have a much much lower uh, uh, variable cost. So this is our task now. I want to organize all of this uh, information from the different web links into Excel. How do I do this? The first thing is to analyze the 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 rules, the web link. We find that if we use AAPL and the and we want to take a look at this web page, the, the income statements, we find that this is AAPL and this is income statement. Okay. But if we type the balance sheet, you find that it's still AAPL, but this is balance sheet. This makes me think if I change this to G O O G, will this give me the balance sheets of Google? The answer is yes. So I find out if I change this to income statements, it's going to give me uh, the web page of the income statements of Google. Well, the, the, Says like there is no time for that. Um, let's, let's, let's see. Amazon. A M A Z A. So we have this data. So the steps are pretty clear so far. We want to open different webs. Well, compared to this task, we only have one web page. For this task, we have a lot of different web pages. For different sale, for different uh, the the variable, like say uh, total revenue or gross profits, we have the data in different web links. So first, we have multiple web links, and in each web link, we want to get the specific data from a web link. Then we organize them together. How do we do it? <clears throat> Let's first uh, ignore the, this is the main function. Again, this is the main function, and at the end, I just use the main function. You can totally ignore it. You can totally ignore this, okay? You basically just uh, start reading it from here. And you also can ignore the, the symbols, because in the end, I would say for symbol in symbols. Let's just say the symbol is Amazon. And we just take Amazon as an example. Simple as Amazon. Okay. And I want to say, uh, I want to get the, the income statements web link for Amazon. Since I have already analyzed the, 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 the structure of this web link, I know this is o.nasdaq.symbol.com. .symb uh, then slash something, which, which is Amazon, the financial score rate equals income statement or balance sheet or cash flow. So here, if I want to have the sim, the the Amazon's income statement, I can simply do increment the URL equals URL form the format. I can input the symbol okay which is amazon the symbol will be used to replace this one this curly bracket and here the financial statements query equal to will be this one this curly bracket will be replaced with income state and which is a string now i have the uil okay, uil is a string again we say browser we can use the browser to maximize, minimize the window. We can manipulate it. We can also manipulate the browser by asking the browser to get all of the information of the given URL, which is this. I want to get the URL. How do I get this? So the browser get the UIL. You find that I it looks like I do not return anything, but in fact, am I recording? Am I am I recording right? But the browser has already got the 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 data. 
How do I know this? Remember that when I when I show you everything, I use this uh, Firefox because I don't want you to be uh, to be confused with the different uh, uh, different browsers. But when I use uh, when I when I when I when I use the code, I use the code to manipulate the Chrome. You can see that the Chrome has already changed the link to show us the web page of uh, Amazon of income statements. Okay. okay. You know, you can also do this balance sheet. Look, this is income statement. This is income statement. I'm not changing anything. And balance sheet. This is balance sheet. See if I use browser.get if I execute it, you see I'm using Python to change to to operate the browser. And now the web page is Amazon's balance sheet. Let's get back to income statements. Okay. So when we get to the income statement, we want to locate the the uh, the company's name the for the companies and the quarters information of total revenue and gross profit and uh, net income. The way we do it is that we need to oh for this I I. We need to analyze its um, is you are the the source code of HTML. But with Chrome, the reason that we use Chrome to teach because Chrome offers a very interesting and good way for us to easily find out the the structure of the the, the code. Also that is. Hmm? Also oh, Firefox also has it. Good. Let's use uh, more tours, developer tours, right above, right top, more tours, developer tours. Then you will have this. This is the whole structure of your, this web page. But you probably wonder why this is much shorter than the Wikipedia link. It's shorter because it folds a lot of things. For example, here you can you can expand all of the codes, and it is still very 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 long. Okay, it's a very large file. Another good thing is that it has a select element in the page to inspect it. Control plus Shift plus C. Control plus Shift plus C, which is a very very good function for Chrome. So. If I want to know, if I want to have, say, this, okay, Amazon's, where in the source code I should, I should find the the position of this this data in the source code. I simply just click on it. What? Well, well, I didn't click it in the right. Click it. Then I locate its position in the source code in the source code here. And in the source code, there was a way for me to copy. to copy something called XPath. Why is this so important? Because when I copy the XPath, I find out, you know, XPath is like kind of like a home address. Okay. It's, <coughs> it's a home address of some information in the whole HTML codes. So I copy the XPath, I will be able to 
What is this X bus? It is this thing. So, no, it's the same. So, uh, it's the same as in the. Uh, so, I can basically just uh, delete this. So, this is what I copied from uh, the Xbus. So, the company, you can say this is the company's Xbus, and uh, while well, it's just a string, I can just ask the browser to find out the element by this Xbus. And export its text. And what I get, what I get is the company name, because all of the different companies web web pages structures are pretty similar. So they have the similar XPass. I can always use the same XPass to export the different elements. Is this magic? I think it's very easy to use. Now, I want to find out all oh, the quarters XPS. The quarters XPS, how do I find out the quarters? Uh, like this is the quarters. I also inspect, select the main, da, 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 this. Okay. The quarters are a little bit more confusing and uh, more difficult than the uh, the the, the company financials because there was in one web page you have only one company's name but in one web page you have four quarters and you want to be very careful about this score its order so for this one see how I also copy the Xbus I will have this it's ID equals financials yeah, you can this one. ID. Well, this this whole thing is the same. It's the same, and uh, it's a division one, division table thread, and TR one. Okay, here's something different. So this is a TH three. Well, this is a TH position. Greater than or equal to three. We said that th is the data. This is a row. This is a tables row. Do you still remember what I said in the Wikipedia page? This tables row is the second row of the table and the fourth table header. Okay. When it's a header, we use th. When it's a data, we use td. So it's a fourth. One, two, three. Well, Oh, it's the third. Well, HTML starts at one. I, I got a mistake. Thanks for, uh, I thank, I thank uh, Frankie for correcting me. This is, uh, this is a third, this is a third uh, column. So uh, I want to have all of the qu quarters. And I can export a list. You know, if I just use the TH3, it's going to export just a, just a, so you see, there is a difference here. Here is a find element by XPass. Here is a find elements by XPass. If your XPass is denoting a bunch of positions, more than multiple positions, we use find elements. If it just you knows one single address, the, the, the place, the position where you store the data, you use find element. Okay. And for the find elements by XPath, you export a list. For find element by XPath, you export a single variable. So here the corners list will be this. Well, that's first uh Put it aside, and let's just say when the quarter, let's just say the quarter x is just a three, what's going to happen? We will have find elements 
I'll just uh, save it by uh, save it as quarter because browsers are uh, fine animated exports uh, export, export. we will have for sale a selenium code and for the selenium code I can just basically use uh, txt okay and I will export the third quarter and but for the quarters which is uh quarters list which is this uh it's a few number like you can use you can use you can write a for loop or you can simplify the for loop as this quarters as a list well each element of the list is a text for each quarter in the quarters list so the quarters list will be this it analyzes every element of this list and export the quarter dot uh, txt the text. Okay. Same thing. We can do the quarter quarter endings. Okay. The the more important thing is that we want to get the total revenue, total profit, total revenue, total profit, and uh, the net income. They are all in the income statements. So, in another word, we want to get this. We want to get all of these information. Okay. This data. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Now, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So we have 12 cells. We want to get all of this 12 cells data. How do we get them? <clears throat> Again, we inspect this and we got it. Okay. Here I use, uh, because I'm using the, the, the same way to retrieve the data for all of these. So I write a, write a uh, function to to simplify my code financial info xpath so financial info xpath is always this okay if you copy this xpath for the total revenue you will find that this is 2 just uh, store it. So total revenue is two because total revenue is stored as a second. I think this is a second row. One, two, three. So the cost of revenue, I guess, it should be three. Let me see. If I right click it, copy the XPS, I think what I will have. Yeah, one oh, I'm sorry. It's a the TR one and TR two. It's a I'm sorry. It's a it's a TR one is the first row, it's the first row, and TR two is second row. So gross profit should be TR three, should be TR three, because for this one is TR one and TD TD two. I think it's because this is the TD one. This is TD two. I'm not sure I'm completely right, but let me. So this should be uh, yeah. I think this is TD one. The this should be TR one TD one. Yes, so TR one TD one. So the table structure starts from here. Okay, here. I think because it has a different divisions, like this is, these are the same division, I guess, maybe. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so for the total revenue, 
cost of revenue and gross profit, they can simply just change the rows number. So for if I define financial inflows X path as this, and financial inflows X path, if I input two, if I input one, it's going to be the X path for total. The revenue, which is this, so TR1, and instead of having TD, TD2, we have all of the TD starting from 2. We have TD2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, TD2, 3, 4, 5. And for what's the second one? For the cost of revenue, we can simply do use 2. And for the gross profit, we can use three. So for the total revenue, I can get the elements number. What is the elements number? The input is number. Okay, the number denotes whether we want to use, uh, we want to retrieve the information of the ram total revenue or the cost of revenue or the gross profit. Then we use browser dot find elements by XPS. For example, if we have if we have the financial inflows XPS as um, if number is one, that means that we want to have the information of, uh, of uh, total revenue. Then we will have the total revenues XPS as this, and we find all of the elements by XPS, and the information will be this okay so still if we find that so here we do the if else because we worry that maybe the position will be over four over four no the, the number of uh so if the positions have two three four five then we are pretty sure that we successfully and correctly locate the row with four columns here. But in case we may have the other, you know, some of the different addresses probably have, the different places may have the same address by mistake. But we think if we have the the, the number of sales as four, is quite unlikely that we, uh, we are we're getting anything wrong. But if the, we got something that we, we got the list and not having four elements but the other like three or five elements then we are pretty sure it's not the right row that we are looking for it may be some other rows that misspecified by the same x pass so if we find that the financial info list is not four we just return NAN. Uh, here we don't do mp.nam because we have already imported NAN from numpy directly if it is um if it is um um, if it has four elements, we just return this financial infos dot text for financial info in the whole list, which is the same as this as what we do for the quarters. Okay, we can do this because for the quarters and for the total revenue for all of the other financial indicators like gross profit and um, and uh, uh, net income, we have four numbers. It's a list of numbers. Uh, we don't do that for company XPS because for each web page we only have one company name. So when we do total revenue equals get elements number. Oh, I haven't imported this function. So total revenue should be, it should be a list of this, of list. Well, there are other ways. Uh, uh, I think I think Frankie has already uploaded the other codes. Now we uh, we are we are inspecting the position of the data using the XPath using the number. There are the other 
ways to inspect that. For example, I want to just to find out all of the information uh, with total revenue, but also with the dollar sign. Okay, not for the not with the position, but with the dollar sign. Then it's also unlikely that we get anything wrong, which is another way. But these codes are in the other uh, files, so you can take a look at by yourself. Then I, I will get the list of four strings, which <coughs> represent the the total revenue number in the, the different quarters. Now, same, similarly, we can get the gross profits and adding them. And adding them. Okay, gross profit, we will have this. And for adding them, we will have this. Okay, so two million. 2,134,000 to, where, where, where is it? Net income, okay, net income issue, 2,134,000. Um, <clears throat> okay, similarly, we can get, we can repeat whatever we're drawing for the balance sheets, okay? In the balance sheets, we can get the, we can use a browser to say for the balance sheet. I feel a little bit dizzy. Because it's, uh, it's a little bit hard for me to, to, to talk in front of a screen with, without looking at any people. Um, so browser.get URL. I can have, have this, okay. So I use uh, I use this browser's driver to to um, to access the URL link for the symbol which is uh, Amazon and Amazon balance sheet. Okay, URL is this. Okay. Remember that we have a URL format here. Uh, it's it's a form here. Okay. Okay. And we just uh, simply replace this curly bracket with Amazon because we have the symbol. Just to remind you that we have the symbol of uh, Amazon, and we uh, replace this curly bracket as balance sheet. So we use browser.get URL. We will get into here. After we get here, we can simply just. Uh, um, You see, uh, if I want to get the total assets data, total, where is total assets? Total assets. I want to know where it is. So I inspect the address, the Xbus. So I copy the Xbus. Okay, I find that this is a, hmm? This is Hmm? This is total assets. Oh, so you got it wrong. So we should we should we should change this as a total. Anyway, since this is a fifteen, I'll just get this as fifteen. Okay, I want to get the total assets, not total current assets. And for total liabilities, I want to have the total liability. This is total liability. Let me check whether your post is right. Is 26 is correct. So total equity is 33. I assume it's correct. So uh, so let me just do this. Okay. And total assets. For total liabilities. Liability is just, uh, it's a 142 million. 142 million is 142 million, so we are right. So you always wanna, you wanna, you wanna check the, the numbers by yourself. And again, then we return to cash flow, then we get the net cash flow, okay? After we do everything, we append all of these data into a, we use the list of zip. Well, this is what we, we, we have already talked about in the, in the data frame pandas 
class. Uh, so we just uh, we just uh, append all of this. We defined it as an empty list. And uh, and we just uh, we just uh, okay. uh, we put all of them. Uh, we we now use a list of lists method rather than the the previous year we use a dictionary method to create a. Uh, the data frame. Now we use a list of lists to have. This. Oh, uh, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't execute the, the order in this. Okay. Net cash flow. Oh. Yeah, I uh, guess for something I didn't do. Now I'm successful. And I have the DF list. And the DF list will be this. Okay. I have, again, for the DS, DF lists, uh, I want to convert the DF lists into the DF. So far, uh, I don't need the browser anymore. And for the DF, I can we can take a look at number of columns, and we have the Coptic order, order ending, uh, different different financial indicators. Uh, when we don't need the browser, we can simply quit it. So you see here, it just disappears. Okay. Now, since we have created DF, we can just simply save it into a CSV somewhere. Okay. The end of the. Uh, this is the end of the, the financials, company financials. Let me run everything all over again, and you see, uh, because I'm not still opening it, let me turn it off first. So when I ran it, it's a little bit different than. Uh, so first, it, it's going to go here. The, the the file will go here and find out that this is uh, the main function. And it goes to the main function and find out there is a loop. And for every symbol in this, the symbols list, which where we have we have uh, five. Well, you don't you don't need to just have five. Uh, tickers, you can have like multiple tickers. For example, you can have a list of 150, 1,500 uh, uh, companies, and you can let it keep doing this. You 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 take a nap, then when you wake up, then this is hopefully done. Um, then for every symbol, every ticker, you just uh, you just uh, keep doing what we just do. Okay, it's a simple code. Well, you see, it's a little bit long because because we have a lot of uh, detailed, um, the detailed uh, uh, comments, the 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 really used lines are no more than thirty, I guess. It's just my pure guess. Okay, and we have a lot of comments here. So let me just run it, and you can see what's going on on the driver. One, two, three. Four. So now I'm maximizing it. If you still remember, we have such a code. Why is it so slow? Uh, it's yeah, we are maximizing it. Then the, see, it's uh, it's opening this page and uh, collecting the data. Then redirects to a balance sheet. The balance sheet here. Then the cash flow. Then it's done for Amazon. Then it goes to the income statement and balance sheet of uh, Apple. Then it goes to cash flow. Then Facebook.
Okay, then it uh, stop, and uh, we print out scripting is done, so that we can have a uh, company financial. So it's just to create it. And we have this. Good. Um, now we have a homework. The homework is you modify the codes and uh, download all of the the wait. Let me see whether this is. Uh, yep. Yeah, the homework is uh, um, that you. Organize all of these variables information for every company in Nasdaq since 2010. Okay, not only you want to have the quarter data in, in 2009, uh, 2019, uh, and 2018, you also want to get the historical data in the past 10 years or past nine years. And I want you to have all of this uh, the quarterly data so you can do some analysis. Uh, if you want to make it the final project, uh, you're welcome. Uh, just make sure that you communicate with Frankie that nobody else is doing the same project so that you don't have a conflict in the, in the presentation file. So that's it. Let me stop recording. And uh, I don't think like you will have enough time to do this uh, to do this homework right now. It's just to take a uh, take a take a take a rest for like maybe five minutes. Then we come back to talk about Guy Fee. Let me stop recording.